Hello everyone, Julio Petrovic, Product Manager at NetAlly, here to show you how to perform a Bluetooth or BLE site survey using an Etherscope NXG. And the process is pretty straightforward, guys. It's very similar to what you will do while performing a Wi-Fi site survey. Basically, the only difference is that you need to turn on the Bluetooth radio on your Etherscope. After that, all the best practices apply. For example, you can see me here on the screen doing a site survey with my Etherscope. Basically, you just walk around the site, tap on the screen. When you get to the end of the signal propagation or the little the circle on the screen, just stop, tap again to collect another data point and repeat as you walk. And you'll go through every hallway, go into any rooms, into any offices, and the idea is that you will collect as much data as possible. Also, the same as I did here, when you change directions, make sure that you tap so you, you can keep track of where you're walking through or where the data points were collected while walking around the site. So pretty straightforward process. Again, very similar to what you will do with a Wi-Fi site survey. And then after you're done, just upload those results to Link Live. And from there, you'll be able to do your analysis. After doing a Bluetooth site survey with your Etherscope NXG, the process of reviewing the data on Link Live is pretty straightforward. Uh, first, just go to the Air Mapper section on Link Live. After that, select your project. Notice that when you select the project, you'll be able to see what type of surveys were performed, like a passive survey and an active survey. So we have dual surveys here at the same time. But another thing you'll notice is that if a Bluetooth survey was performed in parallel to the Wi-Fi active and passive surveys, you'll now get a new option here on the toolbar called the View BLE Survey. So pretty easy, just click or tap in there and that will generate your Bluetooth survey heat maps. And here we are. Notice that when it comes to visualization options, there will only be one for RSSI or signal strength. You'll have multiple filter options. Notice that the filtering options are different from those on the Wi-Fi survey uh, section. Basically, in this case, you'll have filters for address, beacon type, company name, iBeacon, major ID or minor ID, Edistone namespace, Edistone instance, and so on. So they're more Bluetooth focused type of filters. Uh, from here, everything else works the same way as with the Wi-Fi site survey heat maps. Basically, you could enable the values to look at the signal strength, you could filter for specific beacons. So let's say, for example, I only want to look at these four beacons here. Then click Apply. Now you can select any area, and you'll be able to see details for those beacons that were selected. Notice that you can sort by, let's say, beacon name, or you could sort by signal strength or RSSI. You could also move things around. So let's say you want to know more about beacon type. So you can just move that in there. Notice in here, you'll have all the information for different beacons. For example, for Eddystone, a UID type of beacon, you'll see Eddystone namespace information, Eddystone instance information. Meanwhile, for Eddystone URL uh, beacon types, you'll see the URL. And for iBeacons, uh, you'll see the iBeacon UUID, a major ID, and minor ID. So lots of information regarding uh, your Bluetooth network that helps you validate uh, the coverage of those beacons that are on site. Of course, from here, you get all the other functionality available on, on Link Live to review heatmaps is available. So you can just, for example, gray out weaker signals, or you can just zoom in and zoom out as needed. 
or you can just generate reports by creating new Bluetooth templates and adding, adding them to a PDF report. And well, guys, I think uh, that covers this uh, quick overview on how to use Link Live to generate uh, Bluetooth or BLE heat maps. Thanks. Thank you.